Did you know that in all of history, there is one woman who is thought to be more dangerous than Hitler? She is none other than Cleopatra. She was a blend of seduction, incest, propaganda, dramatic murders, crazy politics, and premeditated wars springing up from her Egyptian dynasty. Whether it be family, friends, or foe, Cleopatra leveled everyone who got in her way. By the end of today's video, you will not only have learned about Cleopatra and her scandals, but you will also find out how she died and how her death brought about a new civilization in human history. Cleopatra from Greece to Egypt. Although renowned for her seductive beauty, which brought a number of powerful men to their feet, Cleopatra didn't just sit back and let that beauty define her. Her personality was spiced with intelligence and an insatiable self-preserving desire to parlay with the most powerful people in the ancient world. Her close friends were Rome's finest military generals and societal top guns. Before we continue, let us take a peep into Cleo's journey to Egypt. Oh yes, the dramatic Egyptian princess was of a different descent. Cleopatra was born into the Greek family of Cleopatra VII Philopater, a respected royal family resident in Egypt. By birth, she was a part of the Ptolemaic lineage, a Greek family recognized by their Macedonian origin. While she lived in Egypt and lived as an Egyptian, ethically and logically, she wasn't exactly one of them. At that time, Egypt was already under the influence of the Greeks and was being ruled by the Ptolemaic dynasty. As it was with the genealogy of many Greek royal families, Cleo's family was an incestuous one. Therefore, it was a familiar sight that they married each other, and history has it that Cleopatra's parents were half-siblings. This was done for the purpose of preserving the noble bloodline. She became a ruler when she was 18 and married her younger brother who was just 10 years old at the time. A union many believed was going to be blissful turned out to be the complete opposite. She was not willing to share the throne with her husband, and this strained their relationship, and their rule never had any signs of peace. To make things worse, she erased his name from every lawful document binding them together politically and instructed a redo of the currency to bear only her image. You may have been trying to paint a picture of Cleopatra in your mind. Perhaps she bears semblance with the heroes found in the stories you have heard about her. Or perhaps you think she was a loving queen who did everything she was told. Well, she was neither of those things. However, she was a seamless combination of beauty and intelligence, wit, and political doggedness. She was vast in several learnings such as philosophy, mathematics, and astronomy. And she was fluent in many languages. This versatility in language was one of her greatest leverages in the political scene. Cleopatra could hold conversations around politics and economics in any room. Not letting her gender difference in her patriarchal generation hold her back, she did everything that her male counterparts did, and yet she didn't lose her femininity. She was indeed a truly powerful woman. Back to family. Her husband, feeling betrayed, was not willing to allow Cleopatra rank higher than him. In his antics, he was able to send her away from Egypt to Syria. Yes, she was exiled. She was down and almost defeated, but the tenacious queen was not yet out of the picture. She got another shot at the throne when she met Julius Caesar through her assistant in Rome. Cleo and Julius Caesar, a tale of love and death by mistake. Cleopatra, being smart, knew that her alignment with the Roman general Julius Caesar would be a very great tool in recovering the throne. Luckily for her, Julius Caesar came into Rome after a military campaign, and she wasn't about to let this opportunity pass her by. Since it was risky for her to be seen around or walking with Caesar, Cleopatra skillfully hid within a packed royal carpet that was to be delivered to Julius Caesar by her personal assistant, Apollodorus. She got mailed to him, and he received her well as a special gift. They became passionate lovers, and not just that, battle-ready allies as well. History has it that she was Caesar's mistress, or due to her alluring demeanor, Caesar could have been her mister. Whatever relationship the two had produced a son, Caesarian, meaning little Caesar, or can be simply called Ptolemy Caesar, Egyptian root. What a thrilling mix of the quest for the throne and the leverage of love. Julius Caesar led his Roman army to defeat Ptolemy IX, Cleo's younger brother and husband. Cleopatra became once again in charge of Egypt, and this time with another of her brothers, Ptolemy XIV. 
Well, she poisoned him without hesitation so that her son Caesarion would rule by her side. A ruthless but politically inclined move that secured her claim to the throne and protected her child. Her relationship with Julius Caesar did not only get on the nerves of the Romans, but also became a thrilling view for them. Yes, they were angry that she was a foreigner, but still thrilled that the relationship worked. Perhaps an inspiration to the Roman women rather than a taboo. Her affair with Caesar was, however, short-lived. In the wake of one of those days, Julius Caesar woke up to a note written by Cleopatra on which was inscribed, By the time you read this, I would have been dead. Without confirmation or delay, Julius was filled with remorse and ran himself through a very sharp sword. Just then, his friends rushed him to a tomb where Cleopatra came to join them after she was informed of the incident. In her arms, Julius Caesar took his last breath. She smeared herself in his blood. Cleo would soon join him. She left Rome sorrowful, but the bias for Rome remained as she continued to foster political relationships with the Romans even when Egypt was wary of them. Cleopatra and Mark Antony, another love story and a ride to the death. One would think her love escapades were over following what happened to Caesar. Perhaps she was done, but got called upon by another Roman military general, Mark Antony. Mark was Julius Caesar's closest friend. After Caesar's death, he invited Cleopatra over to inquire if he could trust her, as he was still in awe of how the foreigner won the heart of his closest friend, one of the most powerful men who walked the earth. As expected of a woman whose demeanor won the heads of generals and their army as a souvenir, Cleopatra made a royal walk into the presence of General Mark Antony, maybe to lure him to be her mister or to weigh him as a political leader. Nobody knew her true intentions. However, the history records showed that Mark Antony fell deeply in love with her. They both displayed their love with reckless abandonment and, in their passion, returned to Egypt and started a drinking campaign, or what you refer to in modern times as a club. This club was referred to as the Inimitable Livers. They threw loud parties, and in their honor, people called the reincarnations of Isis, Egyptian goddess, and Dionysus, Greek god. A divine matrimony of two pantheons blessed from the heavens, one that would last forever. Or not. A revolt already started in Rome. Julius Caesar's heir and a former partner with Mark, Octavian, gave an image of Cleopatra as a wicked woman who used her feminine power to convert Mark Antony into a national traitor. He declared war against her, and war broke out between their armies. She single-handedly inspired a division between the armies of Rome, those loyal to Mark and those loyal to Octavian. She fought hard against the Octavian-led army, and she was the commander of several battleships belonging to Mark Antony. But her army and Mark Antony's army were overwhelmed by the might of the Octavian-led army. Cleopatra and Mark Antony insisted on fighting together till death. The duo chose to die together in battle rather than flee or get captured. Cleopatra, of course, knew what would await her if she was captured, and her sense of pride would not let her become a footstool for another man. Her demise marked the end of a dramatic era in human civilization, with the battles breaking down the dominance of Egypt as well as the Roman Empire. It birthed several other smaller civilizations that have since existed till date. Cleopatra's life story is symbolic of two things. The first was as an inspiration to many women. It is assumed through her antics that whatever she desires, be it love, power, family, or fashion, nothing stood in her way. The second was a political tragedy that should never be repeated in history. She had an affair with two highly dreaded Roman generals, destabilized the world, and destroyed her enemies and almost led to the collapse of two mighty civilizations. 